Welcome to the glassworking shop. Well, I'm back to work on this Marini pattern that I'm uh, constructing, and I'm not showing every step, especially the repetitive steps when I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I try to show steps where I'm using the Inquala or the squeezer in a way that either I haven't shown before or maybe I haven't shown quite as enough times. But anyway, today I'm going to be uh, pressing together using the squeezer, going to be pressing together some pre-made shapes. This will be a round shape and a couple of flat shapes that will be hot assembled using a hand torch on the Inquala and then squeezed into a kind of, kind of a triangular-ish shape on the squeezer and hopefully the result will be something interesting. So let's get started. I'm somewhat poorly prepared here. I don't have a, a punty quite ready to pick up the piece out of the kiln, so I'll be just fast forward. Of course, this does raise an interesting question about doing YouTube videos. How much do you assume that your audience has seen of previous videos? I've been watching a watching a watching a watchmaker channel where the guy repairs old pocket watches and pretty much every one of them he goes through the steps in detail assuming that nobody has ever seen any of his videos before and since I've seen many of them kind of seems a bit repetitive to me but maybe he's doing it right maybe I should not assume anybody has seen anything and just start every video as if I'm showing it for the first time to somebody who knows nothing. Anyway, I'm heating the end of the punty as hot as I can get it and then heating my Marini piece hot enough to stick but not so hot that it distorts because trying to preserve as much of the pattern as I can and even though the piece was preheated in the kiln it's going to be very very gentle heating it up for use because I've had times in the past where I think a piece is ready to go after it comes out of the kiln and then I put it in the flame and it explodes. So off in the far flame somewhat gently gently just kind of like building up a little heat in the piece remembering that it takes a long time glass cold glass is an insulator and it takes a really long time to soak heat into the core of course hot glass Heat travels much better through hot glass, which makes it a kind of a nonlinear behavior that's rather difficult to comprehend, difficult to build an intuition for. So now the piece appears to be somewhat at working temperature, and kind of. Let it droop a little as I was 
putting it in the Inquala. So now I'm going to just let this guy hang out in the far flame and I'm going to select a handle. I don't need one that long. going to be using the auxiliary heat shield design. This is an experimental prototype design that is not currently included with in Koalas, but probably will be in the future. I'm going to preheat get a, a rod holder here. I'm going to preheat my tongs to avoid shocking my piece and go over to the kiln. So this flat glass strip was made using the technique that I showed earlier. basically making a, a bullseye striping on the Inquala, gathering on the Inquala, striping on the Inquala, pressing into a flat shape on the squeezer, then pulling, carefully pulling, carefully and gently pulling. So once again, I'm heating the, I think the flat shape is not going to have as much of a worry about exploding. So I'm just going to kind of preheat it just a little bit. Then, I'm going to demonstrate how the Inquala and the hand torch can be used for Marini assembly. You notice I've got the, uh, the heat shield here. To avoid directing the torch flame onto the working parts of the Inquala. directing the flame right at the point where I want the pieces to tag together. of that punty and start the process. Eventually I'm going to go over to the squeezer to complete the squeezation, but might as well get the process going here. 
Now I understand I've taken a uh, a Marini making class from Steve Bamey and I've seen a demonstration of the classic method of assembly on a bench torch and even though I'm nowhere near an expert at doing this I believe that there's quite a lot of merit in using the Inquala as a work holding device for Marini assembly. Especially, I mean, this piece that I'm assembling here is a fairly small component, and so it really wouldn't be that stressful to do it in the traditional method by hand. But as the, the assemblies get more complex and heavier, Kind of nice to let the machine hold the weight. Right now I'm just letting, letting gravity do most of the work, drooping the piece. Paying more attention to the ends. Directing the heat into the area where the pieces are going to be connecting. also trying to be careful to avoid overheating and blistering the surface so now of course I got to be careful because this auxiliary heat shield is probably going to be hot after sitting there in the flame for so long. So, I'll be doing a little bit here of just overall heating in the far flame with the Inquala, and then going to switch to handwork I can feel the pieces getting kind of droopy. And now it's over to the squeezer. First squeeze is very important. Slow, careful, not a lot of force. 
I think I said in in other videos there are times on the squeezer when I use quite a lot of force where I'm standing on it but for this particular operation I'm just gently kind of letting the pieces kiss together Now, I'm going to let that guy hang out in the far flame. Of course, that's one of the nice things about the Inquala. It's an assistant. can help you hold a piece while you're doing something else. Hold a piece and keep it hot. So now comes the second layer. I'm only going to be doing two layers here. Once again, I'm heating the the piece that I care about barely enough to make it stick and heating my handle nice and hot and liquid and gooey so preheating the attachment piece in the far flame The auxiliary heat shield is aluminum, so yeah, it's still a bit hot. I was going to say that it, it loses heat fairly quickly, so maybe the, as, the, as the design develops, maybe I need to put a, a wood handle or something on it, so it can be managed a little better. But hey, that's what R&D is all about. Maybe a wood handle on this side. to get a little more stick out when I'm doing stuff like this. So, preparing for the next layer. This is going to be a fairly short video because I'm making two of these assemblies but they're pretty much identical so probably no need to no need to show them both. got my alignment correct here.
directing the heat right into the point where they need to tag. might be able to break off that plenty, but nope. Concentrating the heat mostly on the ends. Just a few words about my, my process and my intention here, that I've always been an inventor, and sometimes I invent before I'm really ready to invent, because I'm nowhere near a master glass worker. I'm still, still struggling with the basics. But that's never stopped me. In music, I was writing songs long before I knew much about music. I always tend to do, do advanced things before I'm ready. And sometimes it actually leads to success. I've actually had success doing this. So, there is not a teacher that I can go to and learn how to make Marini on the Inquala in the squeezer. Because I'm the inventor. Like I said, I have taken a class in traditional Marini making and probably will continue to learn from whatever teachers I have access to, but a lot of what I'm doing, a lot of the technique that I'm trying to invent here is by its nature experimental and somewhat based on ignorance. But of course, I remember early in my engineering career what a more experienced engineer taught me. It stayed with me over all these years, where he said, the old engineer knows exactly why your idea won't work. The young engineer doesn't know yet. The young engineer doesn't have the experience doesn't know that their idea won't work, and so they try it anyway. Most of the time, almost every time, the old engineer was right. The young engineer was just ignorant. The young engineer didn't realize that their idea was stupid. And sometimes the young engineer reinvents the world. 
And I'm trying to maintain that attitude, even though now I'm the old engineer. I try to maintain that attitude of going into a going into a field where I don't know much and just trying to invent. So now I'm starting to stomp on it. And as I start to stomp on it, I'm developing this is what always happens when squeezing with the squeezer. Let's see if I can get this in the camera. You get a little bit of bulge in the center. Always happens. Or at least it always happens for me at the moment with my current skill level. So put on the, the safety globe because that part's going to be hot going to be switching to a larger squeezing die as I work to perfect this shape. And I often wonder if I started this project after 20 years of experience in glass, would it have come out any better? Most likely, yes. Most likely it would have come out better. But I have had over 60 years experience designing and making stuff but I'm still still a newbie in glass but I've often wondered is my greatest weakness also my greatest strength my weakness being I'm not an experienced glass worker, but I remember what they say about teaching an airplane pilot to fly a helicopter, that the instructor says they would almost rather teach a non-pilot because an airplane pilot has all the wrong all the wrong experience they have to unlearn because the helicopter doesn't fly like an airplane. And I wonder if attempting to invent technique with the Inquala and Squeezer, I wonder if it would be in some ways hampered if I had 20 years experience as a glass worker? Of course, it's a hypothetical question. I'll never know the answer. Getting very, very close to complete. I'm getting pretty happy with the shape. The ends are never perfect, and if I drive myself crazy trying to get the ends perfect, I end up sacrificing some of the quality of the rest of the piece. But just in general, I've achieved pretty much what I wanted to achieve, at least achieved it geometrically don't yet know how it's going to look as a design whether or not it'll be a a cool design or 
Oh yeah, well, that doesn't look good. Why did I think that was going to look good? I'm standing on it now, standing and holding, because once the piece develops a little bit of core heat, even after the surface freezes, there's still a little bit of squeezing going on inside. And I want to take advantage of every bit of squeezing I can get. So that nothing is ever perfect in the world of glass. But that's pretty darn good. It's almost exactly the shape I was going for. And we will see, we will see how it goes and whether or not once it's assembled it actually looks as cool as I hope it'll look. So that does it for today's video. Thank you for watching. It's been fun. Mm -hmm.